Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories. Where today, am I the jerk for kicking my daughter out of my house for being pregnant? I, 45 female, have a 27-year-old daughter. She has six kids between the ages of 1 and 10. There are three different fathers. She received child support from two of them and she's still with the third one and they've been together for five years. My daughter works part-time and her fiancé is a chef full-time. They've lived with us for the past year and a half due to getting evicted from their last home. The kids in them have our upstairs bedrooms, there's two, but that's still crowded for six kids. They're constantly asking me for help with phone bills. My husband and I have asked for no rent so that they'd be able to save money to get a home, which I do not believe they were doing. I've put up with loud voices throughout all hours and waking up at different hours to cater to the kids because I love my grandkids. I never complain to my daughter because I believe family is very important. It's just that my kids are all grown up. My youngest moved out four years ago and my husband and I had hopes to remodel. We didn't expect them to be living here for this long. On Christmas Eve, my daughter gathered us all around and announced that they were pregnant with baby number seven. Everyone was all excited, but I felt dread. That would mean another kid in our house with not much room. I looked over at my husband and I could tell he felt the same. We discussed later and decided we were going to ask them to move out. Last night at dinner, I brought it up to my daughter and her boyfriend and we told them they have two months to find a place because we can't have another kid here. My daughter started crying, saying she couldn't believe I'd throw her out to the streets for having a baby and this was completely unfair and not enough time. I told her I was sorry. It was painful for me as well, but these living conditions were impossible. She demanded I give her more time or she'd go to the courts and I told her, newsflash, the courts only give you 30 days. She then said my grandkids were going to be homeless because I was selfish. She made a Facebook post asking for rooms to rent because she's pregnant and has nowhere to go and her family doesn't care about her. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. They're basically using you for free rent, bill money, a babysitter, and probably to clean up after all of these kids. She isn't raising six kids, you are. The fact she viewed adding on a seventh as a positive situation, positive enough to announce it on Christmas, shows that she's pretty much planned on you continuing that trend and moving out was never a plan. There's helping family, there's abandoning family, and then there's being used by family. You're in the lattermost category, unfortunately. Best hopes for a good outcome in the long run. Not the jerk. It's on her and her baby daddy to figure this out. They are absolutely taking advantage of you and the fact that she's having another kid that they can't afford, that's a big problem and extremely immature and stupid. Not the jerk. And let her cry on Facebook all she wants to. And when someone criticizes you, tell them, Oh, thank you for opening your home for my daughter, her boyfriend, and their seven kids. I'll let her know she can start moving in next week. Well, what do you think? Is OP a jerk for kicking her daughter out or not? Please let us know. Some of these stories really make me appreciate how simple my own life actually is. My wife ruined my staycation and I'm trying not to lose it. I work a very demanding job. There are very few, if any, times during the year when I have the luxury to take a few days off to myself. When I get home from work, between cooking dinner, doing dishes, and taking care of chores around the house, I get maybe two hours a day to relax. My wife gets upset if I don't spend all of that time with her so I don't get to watch my shows, play my video games, or read my books. I've told her many times that I need time to relax and do things that I enjoy, and she'll agree with me, but then start giving me things to do or try to get me to do something else with her within 30 seconds of me starting. So two months ago, I asked my boss if I could use a week of vacation between Christmas and New Year's. It's a slow week, and we made arrangements to ensure that I'm covered during those days for emergencies. I told my wife that this will be my me time to do all of the things that I want, to de-stress from life and to catch up on the things that I really enjoy. I also plan to clean up my office and organize my files, which is something that has stressed me out for a while. My wife agreed and told me that she was very happy I'm going to be able to do some self-care. This weekend, she informed me that she had scheduled the chimney cleaners for Wednesday because I'd be home. She wrote down a list of things for me to do. Go to Home Depot, clean up the yard debris, pick up groceries for the week, go through boxes in the basement and organize everything. I politely informed her that I would not be doing any of those things, that this week was about self-care and addressing my needs, 
and with only four real days, minus Christmas, I was not going to add additional tasks. She told me to just get to what I had time for. On Tuesday, my wife decided to work from home. This prevented me from organizing my office since we share an office. I put on one of my video games and started to play. Ten seconds later, my wife came flying in and told me to turn it off because it was too loud while she was trying to make phone calls. I told her to shut the office door, but she told me it was entirely too loud and sounded unprofessional in the background. So I pulled out a book and I started reading on the couch. I did that for about an hour when my wife decided to come into the living room and work on her laptop. She turned on the Kardashians. I sarcastically asked if that wouldn't make her sound unprofessional in the background. She replied, I'll just mute it if a call comes in, which is exactly what she did. Then after 15 minutes of trash TV and loud business phone calls, I went into our bedroom to read my book. At this point, my wife kept interrupting me every few minutes. How's the book? How much do you have to go? What's it about? Do you want lunch? What do you want for dinner? Are you still on the same book? Do you want to watch something on TV? Am I ruining your day? Do you not want to spend time with me? Do you know where the black water bottle went? Eventually, it was time for dinner, so I just gave up and put my book down. Today, she decided to work from home again. Oh no. I told her it wasn't necessary, but she told me that she wanted to work from home. I replied, yes, but no offense, I do not want you here. She laughed and said, I know, it's your self-care week, but I don't feel like going in. We can both be here. So I could not be in the office. I had to be up early for the chimney cleaners. I could not be in the living room because they were working in there. I went into our bedroom and started reading my book. She came in and informed me that I needed to stay with the chimney sweepers in case they had questions because she had work calls that she had to take. I wasn't able to concentrate with them working, so I just sat there. When they finally finished, I took my book out and started reading. That's when my wife decided to come out into the living room and turn on the Kardashians again. I migrated into the bedroom, laid down on the bed and continued reading my book. Ten minutes later, she came in with her laptop and laid down on the bed next to me. I did my best to ignore the typing and phone calls and just concentrate on my book. Then she started snoring. Not heavy breathing, but literal congested wheezing, choking and snoring. I sighed, got up, headed into the living room, laid down on the couch and put one of my shows on. That lasted 15 minutes before my wife came in and started talking through it. She kept asking questions about it, criticizing it, talking about how it's clear why she wouldn't watch it, asking how many episodes there are, how long each episode is and so on. Finally, after needing to rewind the same part eight times, I accepted defeat and turned it off. My wife informed me that she thinks she's going to work from home the rest of the week. <laughs> oh no. She saw the look on my face, smiled and said, I know I'm cramping your style and ruining your week off, but it's a quiet week and it works for me to be at home. I told her, I love spending time with you. <laughs> do you? But I need my alone time. I haven't been able to do anything for me and it's damaging to my mental health. She insists that she understands and she wants me to have time to myself, but it seems to be in theory only, not in practice. I found myself snapping at her and being tense with her, and I do not want that. I'm afraid that I'm going to explode. I don't know how to make myself any clearer, but she doesn't seem to be taking me seriously. After reading this, I need a week away from your wife. I don't have any advice. I couldn't be in a relationship with someone who was that pushy and clingy. At this point, go to a hotel or a motel for the rest of the week. Don't even say anything. Just go. As an introvert that needs to recharge by myself, this would drive me nuts. Do you have money to take yourself to a hotel for the next two days? Because if you do, I would do it. Once you're home afterwards, I would sit her down and tell her why you needed to leave the house for two days. I get wanting to spend time together, but the fact that she is that codependent on you that she follows you to every room, even while working, is insane. I would ask for couples counseling because she doesn't seem to care what you're saying. Good luck. Am I the jerk for refusing to childproof my house? My wife and I have a daughter who's 23, we'll call Katie. She has an almost one-year-old son named Jesse. Katie still lives at home with us, which isn't ideal, but we've had to make do with the situation. My wife has basically become a second mother to Jesse, and we have both been helping out Katie as much as possible, as Katie and the father are no longer together. He still does his part, but since Katie lives with us, Jesse is with us most of the time. 
I would rather not have Katie still living with us, but she had nowhere else to go, so we couldn't kick her out with her kid. My wife doesn't have as much of a problem with her living at home as I do, but the main thing that annoys me is that Katie spends her money on stupid things that she doesn't need instead of saving up for her own place. We've given her so much, and she basically just throws it back in our faces. Jesse is starting to walk around furniture and is getting more adventurous. So Katie bought corner protectors and cabinet locks to put around the house as well as baby gates. She came to me and asked me if I could help her put them on stuff and put up the gates, but I told her that I didn't want to start putting all of that around my house. She said we need them up to keep Jesse from getting hurt, but I reminded her that Jesse has a whole nursery that he can learn to walk in, so he doesn't need to be walking around the kitchen or living room or any other room, and it's her responsibility to make sure he doesn't get hurt. We got into an argument about it, and I basically told her that she should be saving her money to get her own place where she can do whatever she wants, instead of buying more things to put in my house. She got pretty upset, but I think she got the message because she hasn't talked about putting them up since. My wife asked me why I wouldn't help her out, and I told her that if we start childproofing our house, it will give Katie the impression that we're willing to accommodate her and Jesse for as long as she wants, and that she can live with us for who knows how long. I just don't want her thinking that she can live with us forever, because as much as I love her and Jesse, the sooner they move out, the better, because it's a lot of extra work for my wife and I. You honestly sound like a jerk in general. How much of a hand did you have in raising your daughter? 15 minutes a day? You're the jerk, because it's not the baby's fault you have issues with your daughter. What is it with some people who just can't wait to get their adult children out of their house? Don't you love your kids? You're the jerk because you're being passive aggressive and inconsistent with your outbursts. Your marriage is at risk and it's not because of your daughter or your grandkid. You need to be on the same page as your wife and not allowing your daughter to be between you. This is unhealthy and unfair to her. One parent saying, take care of yourself. It's okay to spend on self care. Of course you can childproof our house. Ask dad to help you, we're here for you. And the other parent silently resenting every minute of it. Then you finally have a chance to put your foot down and you do so on corner guards and cabinet locks that would make sense even if your grandson did not live with you but was simply in your wife's care often. This is so toxic to everyone involved and it risks breaking up your marriage. You and your wife must decide where your boundaries lie on this, then bring them to your daughter so she can plan accordingly. You want your daughter to start acting like an adult and you don't want to be the one raising her kid. You want her to grow up and learn responsibility. You can't expect these idiots on Reddit to side with you because most of them don't even know what responsibility means. I'm sorry your daughter turned out to be such a disappointment and that your wife enables her to continue being a leech. Don't let these Reddit kids get to you. They are some of the worst people you could ever ask advice from, unless you're asking which anime you should waste your time watching or which new video game you should start playing. That's about the extent of how much they know in life. Bruh, what's wrong with anime? Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or his daughter? Please let us know. Work tried to punish me and it backfired. This happened around 2006 to 2008. I was a tax associate at the most well-known tax service in North America. I did very well in the class you take, which determines your eligibility to be hired as well as teaching you how to do taxes, and I was hired. I bounced from office to office as newbies do, and I was doing well enough that I was always the first to be called if a shift needed to be covered. After my first season with them went so well, I was invited back for the next year, and the class was free because of the invitation back. In case you wonder why the class is every year, it's because tax rules change every year, and we have to keep up. Shortly after the class was over, which I aced, I was approached by the lady who ran the district. She wanted to open a seasonal office in a Walmart 50 kilometers outside the city I worked in. She wanted me as the primary associate there, in part because I had done so well a previous year, in part because I had aced the class, in part because of my background in security, and in part because I lived 20 kilometers closer to this Walmart than anyone else on staff. I wasn't to be a manager, but I was going to be the only full-time associate. I'd open and close almost every day and often be the only associate on site. It was basically my baby to take care of. There were hints it might lead to an advancement in the company as well. I was pretty excited at the opportunity. At first, everything was great. The Walmart staff liked me, the customers liked me, my boss liked me. I was blasting through customers. Only maybe five people walked away due to having to wait 
out of the few hundred who approached my little office besides the produce section. Two months in, right before the tax season really heated up, I had a weekend I'd booked off the same day they had hired me. I was going out of the province to see family. Trip had been set long before they hired me and I'd made it quite clear I wasn't going to be around. The schedule accurately reflected that. So weekend arrives and I go. Had a good time, came home Monday evening so I could be back Tuesday morning. When I got home, I checked my answering machine for messages. There were three messages. Two from my boss, the district lady, and one from the scheduler. I didn't remember everything word for word, so I'll paraphrase. Message 1. Saturday morning, approximately 7 a.m. Hi, Vanija. Sorry to do this to you, but we need you in today. Employee X, who is scheduled to replace you, their car broke down. Message 2. Saturday afternoon, about 2 p.m. I'm very disappointed in you for not responding to me and not showing up. I'll be making some changes. Message 3. Monday morning at 9 a.m. Hi, Vanija. This is the scheduler. Your hours have changed this week. Call me when you get this. Now at this point in my life, I'm not a kid out of high school and I've had enough job experience that I'm absolutely not going to crawl on my hands and knees apologizing and begging for my job. If you're going to be petty and mean just because you messed up, then we're going to have problems. And we did. I called the scheduler and was told I was suspended for a week and had to call my boss after a week to get back on the schedule. She said the boss was trying to put me in my place and teach me how to be a good manager. I'd get back on the schedule after the week was over. I brought up my pre-planned and scheduled time off and also that I wasn't a manager, I was a regular employee. The scheduler was very uncomfortable but she was only doing what she was told. They did need me, she said, just call the boss in a week. I said sure and then didn't. I was furious and I wasn't the one who was going to be put in her place. I called a few of the customers who I'd been working with and explained I was no longer working there and they chose to keep me as their tax gal regardless. It really wasn't intended as revenge, even though it sounds that way. The company wasn't going to make more than it cost to have someone do their taxes anyway. This was purely a customer relationship thing. I like to finish what I start. The real revenge was accepting my suspension. The entire week I was suspended, I made sure to stop in at the Walmart to see if I knew who they scheduled for my shift and if we were friendly, then help them out with the quirks of this location. But there was never anyone there. I confirmed with the Walmart staff all week they had no one working there. Paying Walmart to rent space and getting nothing but a bad reputation for it because the heavily advertised new location had zero employees. It remained that way for the rest of the season, two months. The boss never called me and I never called her. Pride. I have no idea how it impacted her professionally. I stayed far away from taxes ever since. I got another job before my suspension was over and I never looked back. They suspended you because someone else's car broke down? Definition of mess around and find out. I only wish you'd looked up her boss and told them how she shut down a profitable location because of, I don't even know how to explain it. My husband cheated on me. Do you guys think this is a one-time thing? I'm 24 female. My husband, who's 29, we've been together for six years. We got married three years ago. I thought our relationship was perfect. There was never any signs of anything being wrong. He came home on time every day and left for work on time every day. He was always affectionate and I thought our relationship was perfect. But then when he was in the shower, I saw a notification on his phone. It was from a girl on Instagram. I had never seen her before. I opened his phone with his passcode. He had always been very open with me about his passcode and things like that. I had never checked his phone before because I didn't feel like I had to. When I opened Instagram, which I didn't even know he had downloaded, I found a bunch of messages to small influencers who posted certain types of photos. I am in no way against them, but my husband was clearly flirting with them. His account had some photos of him with some heavy filters and his bio said that he was 25 and single. I was shocked, obviously, and just kept staring at his phone, but I couldn't stop looking. I took screenshots and sent them to myself. When my husband got out of the shower, he found me crying and on his phone. He quickly realized what had happened and started to comfort me and told me that it was just a one-time mistake. I asked if he had gone on dates or hooked up with any of these women. Then he got angry and started shouting at me that I invaded his privacy. He kicked me out of the house and I went to a friend's home. I had never seen that side of him before. In six years, he had always been so sweet and loving. Sometimes he'd get angry, sure, but everyone did and I couldn't blame him for that. 
I know that guys have urges to cheat sometimes because it's just how they are biologically, so I don't blame him. I just wish that he had talked to me about it. My friend told me I'm being delusional and made a good point about how he hadn't apologized yet. I thought I should post here after lurking for a while and ask for some advice on what I should do because I feel so lost right now. Update. I read a lot of the comments and advice and I realized that I deserve better than him. I deserve someone that will love me for me and won't need anything else. But something about everything really bugged me. In the screenshots that I had, there was this girl. This girl was like the main person that he texted and flirted with. She was 23 and I just felt so horrible because she seemed so in love with him. I found her Instagram and I messaged her. I thought she deserved to know what happened. She was upset when she found out what was going on, so I can stop referring to her as she and I'll call her Jay. Jay was clearly upset at the whole situation and kept apologizing to me. Then she asked if she could take me out for coffee to talk about the whole situation. I agreed because I was curious. So basically we met up the following day and I talked to her about my husband and she told me how they met and how long they had been dating. He went behind my back and dated her for 10 months. 10 months, which was just insane to me that he managed to find the time in between without me noticing. But here's the kicker, he was still texting her. I quickly learned that Jay was a very vengeful person because she told me that she wanted to lead my husband on for me. She told me that she herself had been cheated on before and was not going to let any cheater get off the hook just like that. Jay gave me a pep talk about how I'm a strong, powerful woman and we need to stick together, which was honestly really refreshing. She said she'd continue to flirt with him, etc., and try to get him to let her come over to our house. Apparently, he only met her at hotels or at her home, and then she'd get a bunch of glitter and throw it all over his stuff. Honestly, it made me laugh to think about this because my husband would be so angry. So I allowed her to do that because honestly, I don't care about any of my stuff that'll get damaged in the process. I wasn't a big spender, so I didn't have much, and I wouldn't be surprised if what I did have was already destroyed by him. Update. So at first, I was staying with my friend, who for the sake of consistency, we'll call Kay. Kay has been a huge help, and I've appreciated her so much. Jay was originally going through with the glitter plan. She updated me every step of the way, even sending me pictures of her buying the glitter. She had sent me screenshots of the text between her and my husband. It didn't even take long for her to convince my husband to let her come over, because he clearly thought that since I was gone, I wouldn't find out. Jay told me they watched a movie, and before things escalated, he went to the bathroom, in which she quickly pulled out the glitter and threw it at his side of the closet in our bedroom. She then ran, taking a few photos of the crime scene before she left. My husband was furious. It was this bright pink glitter that was sprayed all over his work clothes. I'm the one who does laundry, so he had no way of figuring out how to get it out. The funniest part is this man had the audacity to call me an hour after she left and beg me to come home probably to clean his clothes, honestly. I wish I could show you how he sounded when I said no and that I was filing for divorce. He was so shocked and kept stumbling over his words. He never expected that I'd have the guts to do it. The months following weren't easy and my ex-husband was not cooperating or being easy when I was trying to divorce him. He had switched between calling me mean names and crying and begging me to forgive him. Jay and Kay were my rocks and made sure I didn't forgive him. I'm so grateful for them because at some point I felt like giving up and taking him back. Jay especially was great, because as much as I love Kay, she's very traditional. A little background I guess, but I didn't have many friends, and when I got married, I had even fewer. My husband didn't like me going out much. The only friend that I had to fight to keep was Kay. She's my childhood best friend. Kay at first let me stay at her house, and she was shocked by my husband's betrayal, and she thought we'd eventually get back together. After seeing all the names that he called me though, she quickly switched to my side. We ended up going on a road trip together during early March because I was really struggling with my ex and I was exhausted. So we went camping together for a week with no internet connection. That was my first time camping and it was really fun, but definitely never again. Last week, my ex-husband tried showing up at Kay's place where I'm staying and that was a whole issue because he knew Kay wouldn't be home when he came over. It was scary. He was pounding on the door like a crazed animal and screaming. I feel so bad for the neighbors. Luckily, Jay had been over when he showed up because she gave him a mouthful and told him that if he didn't leave, she was going to call the police. I'm so grateful for her because I was just frozen and watching this unfold. I've never been good with conflict. Update. 
so my ex-husband and I have been thinking about getting back together. My roommate, Jay, who is also my best friend, doesn't know, but I know that she would be totally against it. It's a long story. Jay was one of his affair partners, as I mentioned in my previous posts. But recently, my husband showed up to the apartment begging for me to take him back. It was so scary. He looked horrible. He was crying and telling me he didn't know what to do without me. He told me that his mother was sick and she was getting worse. He ended up convincing me to go on one date with him, but then I felt like I was leading him on, so I kept hanging out with him. He's nicer now. He tells me he loves me now and buys me flowers. It's starting to feel like when we first met. This has only been happening for about two months now and nobody knows, but he's really pushing for it to be public. I can't make it public without my best friend knowing and she'd hate me for it. She hates my ex-husband with a burning passion. She hates him for how he hurt me and how he hurt her. She's extremely protective of me and will think he's holding me hostage or something. I really don't want to lose her, but I miss my husband. I miss being a wife. We haven't even fully gone through with the divorce yet because he's been so against it, but it seems we might not need it. Plus, she'll think it's going too fast since I plan on moving out soon too. Any advice on how I should bring this conversation up with my best friend slash roommate? Bruh. I wish I had words to tell you how mad I am right now. The most disappointing update we've ever read. Am I the jerk for breaking up with my boyfriend after he gave me a crappy Christmas present? I, 28 female, broke up with my boyfriend, male 38, on Christmas Day after we exchanged gifts. I have a lot going on. I'm moving houses and I'm dealing with a new job position that has me feeling like I have a lot to catch up on from the past director. I set my alarm very early in the morning last week and took the time to buy him and his daughter, who's 16, presents that they could enjoy. To be fair, there's an income gap between us, but even a pair of affordable earrings could have made me feel happy. Because the house is a mess, I even closed off the living room with curtains so that the stack of boxes and things wouldn't make the Christmas decorations look ugly. I made sure the tree looked nice, I bought the food that he likes, and I made myself pretty for him. He arrived, and the first thing he did was make fun of my makeup. He also made fun of my Santa hat. He laughed like I'm some ridiculous cartoon. We ate and talked, and I gave him my present, AirPods, which he loved to the point of posting on Instagram. His daughter got her present, Hot Topic stuff, and I was very glad that she loved it. He took her back to her mom's house and didn't get back in an hour like he said he would. That's their Christmas arrangement. We were supposed to spend time together, but he came back about three hours later because his mother had visitors and he wanted to catch up. He sat watching TV and gave me zero affection. He gave me his present, which to be honest, I would have preferred not to get anything. I'm not a drinker. He got me a small wine bottle that I've seen marked at three to five dollars at the 7-Eleven. I know I wasn't at my best because he said my face changed. He has a job. He could have gotten something actually thinking of me. I felt horrible when he said he would give me an IOU. I asked him to leave and thanked him for giving me the worst Christmas and took back my present. I cried after he left and when he texted me asking if I was okay, I broke up with him and blocked him. His siblings have been trying to reach out to me and I've blocked them all. One of them accused me of being materialistic and shallow and also said that not everyone has a fancy job and that I'm unfair for expecting a certain level of gifting. Am I the jerk? You didn't break up with him because you're materialistic. You broke up with him because he showed you his disdain, contempt, dislike, disrespect, and disregard for you. And once they show it, there's no coming back from that. Am I the jerk for refusing to make my daughter issue an apology to the class clown? My daughter, Ava, who's 14, is a good kid in general. She gets good grades and is pretty quiet at school, sticking to her friend group and not causing issues. It was surprising getting a call today that I needed to pick her up since she got in trouble at school. Basically what happened was the class clown, Mia, was messing around in class, was dancing and singing during class for no reason. My daughter had enough and told her to just shut up. No one likes her and she's the reason no one enjoys school. A student recorded the whole thing. Mia ended up crying and they were both sent to the principal's office. The principal wanted my daughter to give an apology to her. I told them no and that we're leaving. This started the mom telling me her daughter needs an apology. I told her that her kid is a brat and she should learn how to behave in class. That if she wasn't annoying as she was, my daughter wouldn't have snapped after five months. She called me a jerk and my daughter is iffy if she should apologize, so I'm making this. Edit. This was asked. The teacher was trying to get her back to her seat. This was in the middle of a lesson. 
She was trying and Mia was ignoring her and kept going. Also, this wasn't a one-time thing. According to my daughter, she had five months of dealing with Mia and her behavior. Another question, does she have ADHD? No idea, not my kid. If she does, it does explain some things, but it doesn't excuse it. Update. So some stuff has happened since I posted this. It got out what my daughter did to the other parents, and they've all sent me email receipts of how many times they've tried to get the school to do something about Mia. Most of the parents are upset Ava had to go to the principal. The principal has sent an email about conduct in the classroom and a new policy that if kids disrupt a class, they will be taking action. Don't know what that means yet. Oh yeah, I remember that stage of school. A kid would shout something funny once and everyone would laugh and they'd spend the rest of the school year doing increasingly cringy and annoying things to try and recapture that moment. Bruh, what school allows a kid to disrupt class for five months? That's affecting everyone else's education. As a high school teacher, I'll tell you that every school allows that. Schools are afraid of getting sued for inflicting emotional distress on students for doing anything. Powers have been progressively stripped from teachers to the point that if you're not paying for private school, it's a crab shoot if your kid will learn anything or just be babysat as other kids run rampant. Private school? Your parents and all the others are paying thousands to be there, so you best believe those parents are on it when anything interferes with their kid's education. Since schools don't want to lose kids and money, they deal with the problems. I assume charter schools don't have this issue, as all of the kids want to learn. I threw away the elf on the shelf and ruined Christmas after my husband's prank. For context, this year was the first time we would try the elf on the shelf with our kids. We have three kids, Lucas who's nine, Andy who's eight, and Claire who's five, where Lucas and Andy are from our past relationships. However, Miles, my husband who's 37, has accepted Andy as his, and so did I. Every Christmas is special for Andy. His birthday is on December 24th. His dad started a tradition where Santa would have consideration with him for being a kid of Christmas, so he feels magical and special. I always try to give him that. Last year, I left Santa Claus footsteps, ate a carrot, and grass that he left for Rudolph. Stuff like that. My husband doesn't think it's a good idea I do all that for him, and I'm showing favoritism. So we should shut it down because of my ex's decision to create a tradition without considering my other kids' feelings. I disagree since I do consider the three of them mine. But he asked if we could do something else, like the elf on the shelf. I had no problem with it, but I didn't know how that works. He explained it to me quickly, and since he was the one who offered, I let him do it. We bought the cute elf. My kids named it Bob. Later, my husband explained to them that they should behave and never touch or hold Bob if they don't want it to be naughty. At first, it was cute to see them spy on Bob, try to see it fly each night. Andy was the most excited of all. I found him one night talking with it, asking it if Santa still remembered him. But my husband took seriously the behave or Bob would be naughty part. Lucas was his first victim after he didn't do his chores. The next day, his face was drawn on with Sharpie markers. Then Claire, who touched Bob, and her favorite onesie was destroyed. Apparently, Bob had cut some pieces of it while she was sleeping. Miles was having fun, but I could see my kids weren't. I talked to him about how we should lower the pranks. He agreed, but wanted to catch Andy since he hadn't broken any rules. I told him that Bob's supposed to tell Santa instead of being naughty. We argued, but he finally agreed. Fast forward, it's Christmas Eve, and in the afternoon, we had some of Andy's friends to celebrate his birthday. So the kids were playing in the backyard, but my husband looked sus. I decided to look for Bob. It was supposed to be in the kitchen, but it wasn't there. I asked Miles where it was, and he told me, no idea. I started getting paranoid, but Andy asked me if we could cut the cake already. I put my best face on and went for it. The cake was in a box, and when Andy opened the box, he started crying. I took a look, and it's ruined. Bob was covered in all of it, appearing as if he had been eating the cake. Half of the cake wasn't even there anymore. Miles started laughing, and so did some of the other parents. My blood is boiling, and I grab Bob and throw it in the trash. Then I grabbed Miles. We have a terrible argument. He calls me a jerk for what I did to Bob, that I've ruined it. How are we supposed to keep the magic with our kids if I wasn't supposed to touch Bob? Edit. Hi, everyone. So the responses have been really overwhelming. I'm sorry it took me some time to answer. I was kind of avoiding the post. 1. Andy's dad is from Canada. 
He visits Andy every spring, summer, and on Christmas break. This year, he stayed for his job, so he isn't an absent parent. 2. After Andy's birthday, I told Miles to get out of the house, and so he did. He spent Christmas with my in-laws. I stayed with the kids, and all of them slept in Andy's room. My kids didn't want to leave their brother alone. The next morning, we opened the gifts, and I made sure that Andy could feel special after what happened on his birthday. So I wrote a note from Bob, saying that he's sorry if he scared him and his siblings. He didn't do his job correctly, so now he would be flying to the North Pole with Santa. And when he asked if Santa still remembered him, he did. Santa was really happy to see him. 3. My kids and I are okay. We're sleeping at my parents' house, and we would celebrate New Year's Eve here too. 4. Yes, Claire was using the onesie while she was sleeping. My husband took the idea out of a TikTok. And no, Andy didn't do anything to be attacked by Bob. Not the jerk. He ruined the birthday party with his juvenile prank, as he most likely ruined the joyful and childlike spirit of the occasion for the two other kids with the other earlier stupid pranks. What a horrible Christmas tradition to scare your kids with. A doll that watches over them and exacts vengeance. I usually don't tend to say this, but this action on your husband's behalf is horrible and worth of divorce papers being delivered. Elf on the Shelf is supposed to be a tradition to keep the kids' spirits and hopes for Christmas, not something the parents can use as an excuse to be bullies with their kids. It's okay to joke with it a little, but he took it way too far. Kids remember this kind of stuff, and now Andy would have a terrible core memory of his birthday. Also, ask Miles why he was so obsessed on getting Andy. Like, that's what freaked me out the most. Please, OP, get away from this dude. Not the jerk. Just so I'm clear. 1. You and Andy's father came up with something to take the sting out of your son having a birthday on Christmas Eve. Something which must truly suck as a kid. 2. Your husband decides that this is favoritism. 3. Your husband uses a toy elf to start bullying the kids, destroying Claire's favorite onesie. What? 4. Andy's behaving himself, however, and therefore Bob is unable to do anything to him. 5. This so annoys your husband that he decides to ruin your son's 8th birthday by destroying his cake in an act of pure, unadulterated spite. OP, you're not the jerk, but my god, your husband surely is. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or is her husband? Please let us know. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.